to kick off breakfast show. Welcome back to the Kickoff Sports Breakfast Show on Beach FM with Damien on your Saturday morning. And we continue to celebrate 25 seasons of our beloved Hurricanes. Of course, we started weeks back with the props and we are up to the fly halves. The first fives, whatever you want to call them, they wear 10 on their back. And this week we have a father and son pairing. That's right, in the Hurricanes jersey, Stephen Bishop and Jackson Garden Bishop. So let's welcome into the show the First, I guess, the current number 246, Jackson Garden Bishop. G'day, Jax. G'day, mate. How's it going? Very, very well. How are you doing at this time, my friend? Yeah, no, I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for coming on. It's uh, crazy times, mate. It must be pretty excitement in the camp uh, that you just get to be out there, what, next weekend? Yeah, it was a, it was a long um, sort of eight weeks in lockdown, so at your feet within the boys so the last two weeks have been really fun to get around the lads and then yeah next week hopefully get up to Auckland and um, put on a show for everyone it'll be good fun Absolutely. Hey, mate, I'm always interested to see how a, an elite athlete um, spent their time in lockdown. How did you stay motivated? How did you stay fit? Uh, you know, how did you how did you keep the time? Oh, most of my time during lockdown was with my, my new daughter, actually. She's just gone five and a half months at the moment. So I, I enjoyed a lot of time with her. Awesome. And my partner. Um, in terms of the rugby stuff, I had a couple of weeks at the start where I didn't do much, to be honest. I was just, uh, just unsure when we were going to be starting again. Didn't want to be burned out. But um, we were constantly getting uh, programs and stuff sent from the trainers to, to keep us to keep us um, fit in that. And, you know, just a lot of it was just getting out of the house, which was nice. So it wasn't that hard to be motivated for me. Yeah, I want to I want to take a step step back uh, because you know you you've grown up in the game, mate. Um, I want to I want to say take back to uh, three years old. You know, you, your your dad's uh, playing in the Hurricanes. Do you even remember him uh, playing in the jersey? No, nah, not in the Hurricanes jersey. Um, I've watched a couple of couple of, of his old games um, on reruns, but my first um, memories of him playing rugby were actually when he was when we were in England when he was playing for London Irish and Leeds, right. when I was a bit older. So, you um you obviously had had a bit of childhood over in England, but you are a Scots boy. You have um come through the ranks in Wellington. Um, what was it about the Hurricanes um region, well, the Hurricanes jersey that uh, maybe was a goal of yours early on? Well, I think that was it. I moved around a bit when I was younger, but been in Wellington since I was eight, so I definitely consider myself a Wellington lad. And good boy, you know that's that was just the team that. I grew up loving me. My dad played for them when, when I was younger. Um, and yeah, it just, just came through. Always, yeah, always at the cakes and watching them. Um, and yeah, it just as I came through school and they just started making the age group teams and just loved it more and more. And then obviously I got to, to the peak of the region at the moment, which is, which is really cool. Jackson, you are a, a son of uh, a, a All Black and a Black Fern, of course, uh, Sue Garden Bishop. Have you ha, have you had pressure on you your entire life to perform at this level, or did it just come natural? Has it been a fun for you, or has it just been uh, it's always been uh, there? So I'm going to do it. Um, no pressure from the people that I really care about their opinions. To be honest, there, there was quite a bit. Of, there's always been heaps of chat, um, especially when I was younger. You know that. I was always in the position I was in just because of my last name and that. But um, my mum and dad always just wanted me to do whatever I was having fun doing. So I played all sports growing up. Um, rugby just happened to be, to be the one that I fell in love with. Um, and obviously they would, would have been happy about that. But a um, little bit of pressure from the outside, but, but none from mum and dad, which was which were the main people that I um, cared about their opinion. So, you yeah, know, I've always just enjoyed rugby. It's never been a chore for me. Awesome. Hey, um, a pretty pretty uh, talented family. Uh, you, you're one of eight siblings, I, I, I believe, and uh, you yeah. know your brother's down in the Highlanders. Your sister's uh, playing hockey over in America. Uh, how do you, do you guys keep yourself motivated? Is it a bit of a competition between the um, Garden Bishop household? A little bit, especially between me and my brother. Now that he's sort of coming onto the into the semi professional professional rugby scene, um, but. The difference in age, we haven't, we can't really compare each other. Yeah. Um, definitely, when we were younger, a few, few scraps and that playing, playing in the backyard. But as we got, as we got older, older it was more, um, more supportive. And but the competition's coming back now that my brother's at the same level. <laughs> You must be excited to play in me. Um, these local derbies coming out. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Hey, um, being such a family uh, uh, 
uh, man, you know, you, you, you with that support network and all of you around you, it must have been a bit tough to, um, you know, go out on your own and and have a stint with the Rebels a, a few years ago. Yeah, it was that was that was um, the first time that I lived away from my family, so that that was a big big part of the decision. But I think that was also really good for me in that sense because. You know, just gave some. I wasn't living at home, but sort of that genuine independence when where I didn't have my family around, and that definitely missed them when I was over there. But I grew a lot um, off the field in terms of my maturity while I was over there. So that was that was good. But although it was tough at times, but I, I take a lot of positives from it. Yeah, I, I always feel for you, for you guys that that get to start your your professional career so early because you know you might be going off and doing OEs, um, but you've got to kind of you know bide your time and and maybe that contract later in in your career. So I I, I applaud you uh, taking the stint to to the Rebels, and and as you said, it changed you. Like you came back a different player, if you will, uh, kind of you know, and in that um, Lions lineup, you got Player of the Year, and then got that uh, call up the next season to the Hurricanes. Um, tell us, uh, how how did you take that next step um, to further your career in New Zealand when you did come back to that Lions camp? Yeah, well, I was excited to go to the Rebels because I missed out in New Zealand. It was my goal to play for the Hurricanes that year, but all the spots were taken. So I was happy to go across the Tasman for the opportunity. And I think it was just experience. I mean, it was a pretty disappointing year in terms of the rugby for us as a team, but I got to start in 13, 14 Super Rugby games and, and played full games, you know. So yeah. as a first fire, getting that sort of experience at such a high intensity at a high level of rugby, that coming back to my 10 after that, everything sort of to, sort of um, slowed down for me a little bit. Um, and, I, and also in 2017, we had an awesome Wellington Lions team. Um, the Fords were amazing. And we were, we were carving up and, uh, and I was getting a lot of, a lot of good ball. So... Yeah, I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that the group has gave me in, in terms of um, being able to grow as a player and then come back and thankfully get an opportunity here. Brilliant. Hey, um, last couple of seasons, you have had a, a certain player in, in that 10 spot. Was that time with Bowden there, what, did you learn heaps or was it was it a setback for you? No, definitely not a setback. I knew I knew what the um, situation was when I signed, when I, when I came back. I knew I was going to be um, either number two or number three behind him. So I just knew that I had to learn as much as I could. And then when the opportunities came, I need, needed to be as ready as possible. So that the um, coaches had faith, had faith to put me on the field when, when the opportunities arose. So just being able to see how Bodie operated off the field, um, on the field, how he studied the game, how he handled himself, um, was massive for me, especially just when I was a few years ago when I was quite still quite young. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely learned a lot from him. Awesome. Um, and you must be pretty excited to play him next week as well. Yeah, no, sure. it's a good good challenge. Always good to go up against the best. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Last year, mate, you did get suffer a knee injury against Japan. Um, how does what what kind of mental toughness does that take to come back as an elite athlete um, to to come back and, and play for the for the Canes this year? Yeah, any injury is tough. I mean, I feel for the boys that get the, you know the season ending type of injuries. I was out for twelve weeks, I think, and you, know, you, you get into some pretty deep wells during those times. You spend every day sort of getting up, getting to run around, you know, do what you love, and then all of a sudden just. Uh, snap of the fingers and, and you can't really do anything so it can be tough at times but you just gotta gotta be good at um, setting goals know where your goals are long term and then keep your mind occupied with the short term short term goals that you set out in order to achieve them absolutely absolutely hey big year for you Bodie's gone you're now a father how, how is um is this a, a, another chapter for you another a lease in your career I hope so. I hope so. It's a it's a good battle between me and Fletch to see who will start um, through this campaign. So I'm doing whatever I can to hopefully get that ten jersey and then hopefully play my well play my way into some decent minute, minutes over this year and um, potentially years to come. And yeah, like you say, being a, a new dad and now I've got a, I've got a lot to play for now. So I'm, I'm really just um, laughing it all up and just enjoying every minute. Absolutely, mate. 
Well, next week is the time. Um, uh, how, how are you guys actually, you know, uh, are we ready to go this week? Um, what are you most excited about and fearful, I guess, of the local derbies every week? Um, I, I think the boys, emotionally, would be re- we're ready to go three weeks ago, but we've been slowly we've been slowly building on the field in terms of our, our gameplay and our fitness and that. So come next Sunday, I'm, I'm sure both teams will be will come out hissing. So it's going to be tough. I mean, we've got 10 weeks to, it's going to be whoever comes out fastest pretty much and we can hold on. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be crazy. I can't wait. Awesome. Lastly, mate, as someone that is, uh, you know, a proud, a proud um, man of, of any jersey that you've put on, Maldives, Hurricanes, Lions, Rebels, um, what is it most about this Hurricanes jersey that, that you, you know, you cherish to put on every week? Oh, I think a big one is just knowing that my dad wore the same one um, back in the day, and not just him, all the, all the great, all the great players that that wore their jersey before me. Just um, knowing that I have have an opportunity to sort of add to the legacy of it, and um, yeah, that's just all I try and do every week. I try and try and uh, add to the jersey and do do the best for the team. Awesome, mate. Well, we can't wait to see you back out there. Thank you so much for your time today. Go well. Look after yourself, and hey. Uh, Here's to that. Here's to that new exciting chapter for you. Cheers, bro. Easy. Thanks.